Today, we continue to explore Vinetsa region. In this holy land, the first Christians appeared in Eastern Europe. We'll visit the Maldives of Vinetsa region and a snail farm. Want to find out what else is unique about this land? Let's go! Heather and I are about to head up to the Ladovsky Monastery. Yes, it was founded in 1013 by the famous Orthodox monk, Anthony of the Caves. Yeah, at an altitude of about 90 meters, he carved a cell into the chalk slope of the left side of the Dniester River. Let's go for a I'm so hike. ready, I'm so ready. <laughs> I've only got a, go on, good after, to wait for me. So who is this Antony Perchewski, the founder of Orthodox Monoticism in Eastern Europe? But why did he decide to found his monastery exactly here? You see, he walked from the holy Mount Athos to Kiev and decided to stop after seeing the wonders of this land. But at least that's what I understand from the Wikipedia article. During its 1,000 year history, Lyadovsky Monastery withstood few barbaric attempts of demolishing. But the story with Soviet authorities was the most memorable. In 1938, the monastery was blown up, declaring parishioners and monks to be enemies of the people and smugglers. All of that because the border with the Nazi ally Romania stretched along the Donitsa. And here, they built a secret line of defense. According to the legend, a sapper who blew up the temple died in the quarry from self-laid explosives. Some people say that the day before he heard the angels singing, but he didn't pay any attention to the warning. So this is the ossuary, uh, the ancient tombs and crypts of the monastery. And in these ossuaries you can find the remains of ancient monks, some of which are over 1,000 years old. Let's go peep those old bones. It's genuinely terrifying. This well at the monastery has been here for over 1,000 years. Yes, uh, the water comes from the mountains, uh, but it's got a more sort of modern filter system, so it uses a silver silicon, and then of course, yeah, the rocks from the mountain. Mmm, and it has miraculous properties, so after this very hot day, I can't wait to try it. Yes, yeah, so let's have a sip, shall we? Right. Mm. It's so cold, and that is oh. truly a wonderful, wonderful ah. thing. Oh, that's so good. So now on our very exciting quarry tour, we are at Cherepashinsky Quarry. And it used to be an old granite mining station, but in the 90s they stopped working here and water came in to make it look like this. And the locals call it the Maldives of Vinica. Yes, because of the beautiful turquoise water. Uh, it can be so transparent as well, you can see up to five meters below the surface. And surrounding the lake is a beautiful pine oak forest. So shall you get in and I'll walk, I'll walk around. You can go bird watching. Yeah, right. Granite was once mined here. This earth rock is used in the construction works, mainly houses, bridges, and monuments. The depth of the quarry reached 90 to 100 meters. Then, in the 90s, the quarry was closed and then water began to appear.
We've had a lovely time at Jelapashinsky uh, Quarry uh, with this lovely turquoise blue lagoon. Yeah, I'm very grateful to be here and enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the views. Um, it's a great place if you like for family, for friends, you can camp here and have a nice get away. Yeah, so I mean, it doesn't get very busy, but it's 100% it's worth it for a quick visit and a nice photo op, of course. Um, so should we see what the rest of this region Vinitsa. has in store for us? Let's go. Yeah, let's go. We are here at the Aviation Club near Vinitsa. Uh, it was founded in 1934 and covers an area of 260 hectares. So, you ready to fly, Rob? Yes, let's fly, Rob. Oh, you've gone, you've gone this way. To the plane! Onwards, darling! Hello, Alex. Lovely to meet you. I'm Rob. Hello, I'm Heather. So, tell us a little bit about your uh, aviation sports club. Yeah, this is the one of, of the most old and maybe famous aviation club in Ukraine. Uh, in the past, we have in Soviet time, we have a special organization which was created by the Ministry of, uh, of Military Support to, to support actually uh, army. So the idea of such clubs was to prepare future uh, soldiers. So it's parachute jumping, future pilots, that's the glide, gliders and the planes. Mm -hmm. This is independent organization, so we are not belong to uh, military ministry anymore and we are not uh, belong to uh, Ministry of Defense, sorry. Yes. In the meantime, uh, it's remaining one of, of the um, uh, such clubs like was in the past. So uh, we are here, another one, for example, in Kiev, there is one in Rivne, there is one in Odessa, there is one in Dnipro and maybe a couple of others. So it's a number of organizations. Well, the club is actually exists already for a very long time, more than 70 years. Yeah. yeah, it was established in 1934, and on this field it's uh, since 1960. Wow. So how did you get into this? Into I don't know, that's a long story, or maybe a short story. I was, <laughs> I was dreaming to fly all my life, and uh, the only possibility to fly uh, in the vicinity of my city, uh, this was this air club. I started from the gliders. Then I moved to Belgium. I was studying, uh, my first uh, study for the pilot was in Belgium. Uh, when I completed my study in Belgium, I got my first pilot license. I came back here. I came to the guys and said, I want to fly something. <laughs> I, want, I want to fly the biggest plane in the world, Antonov of 2. It was for me kind of just to ask. How did, did they say yes? They said, yeah, get in. Get out. Pop in, it's easy as that. Yeah. And wing it. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> since that time, it's already seven years ago, since that time I'm flying here.
Heather, um, did you know that Ukraine houses quite the uh, perfect environment for a certain kind of farming? What farming? Snail farming, to be exact. Oh, I love snails. You do? Well, that's lucky, yeah. because that's exactly where we are. Ah, oh, wonderful. A snail farm. Oh, this is Valentina. Hello. Hello. Privet. Privet. Welcome. Privet. 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 So you are the owner of this fine snail farm. Yes, I am the owner of this farm. This is a family-owned snail farm called Snail Valley. We started it with my husband as a family business, so we are glad to invite you to visit us. Very, very happy to be here. We're very excited about this. We've been looking forward to it all day. Yes. You're very welcome here. Da? Da? Escargo, have a look inside. How popular is this business in Ukraine? Over the past 10 months, Ukrainian companies have exported 347 tons of snails. Despite the fact that it's mostly small farms that are engaged in snail breeding. The main consumers of Ukrainian grape snails are the EU residents. Snails are processed into a semi-finished product, frozen and transported to foreign markets. Mainly Italy, Spain, Germany and France. Wow, look at all these snails! I mean, the smell is the first thing that I, uh, <laughs> that I noticed. Can I, can I put one on me? You want to just go straight in and put a snail on you straight yeah, away? we do the interview. Oh! Will you... There's nothing you won't touch, is there? Oh! Yo no svarte. Snail! <laughs> <laughs> so my first question is, how did this happen? How did you end up owning yes. a snail Yes, the first farm? question is why. That's why? the first question. <laughs> it happened so that my pregnancy leave was almost over. And I needed to find a thing to do that is enjoyable to me. The one that I would enjoy. The one that I would be interested in. In Ukraine, three years ago, this kind of business was very unusual, so to speak. I can't see why not. I can't see why not. Ukraine has an excellent climate for growing snails. But there's no culture of snail consumption. Are you the first snail farm? Like, are the most, the biggest, the most popular? There were already about five snail farms in Ukraine at that time. I mean, what are their names? The kind of snails we have is Helix Asparza Maxima. Oh, oh, OK. Um, and is this so? Is this for all the snails? But are they not in season right now? Here you can see a part of the herd. Snail farms are usually being set in late February, because snails start laying eggs in two weeks after that. Are they male or female, or does it not matter? Oh, I, know, I see. I know the answer to this. So, hello, tiny child and dog. Like Don't snails? give the dog. Snails are hermaphrodites, so they they basically have male and female sex organs. So, did you start with one snail and then it just produced all these? Yes, they are hermaphrodites. We bought our first snails here in Ukraine, that was officially imported from abroad before that. The farm is fully legal, and the snails are certified and checked. Wow, and how long do they live for? They grow here at the farm. Then we collect them in the field, clean their intestines. We dry and pack them in nets in a state of anabiosis and put them in the fridge. And then they are transported to Europe. Here is our summer house. It is just a summer barn, where we grow a snail from the tiny little thing I showed you before to the snail that is ready for export to Europe. OK, so these are like the, this is the free range area, more comfortable for the snails. Oh! This is like when you go strawberry picking and occasionally you can just take one and eat it just before you go and pay, so please. Could you eat that? You better not eat it when it is small. Sorry. No. <laughs> because it's dangerous or because it just doesn't taste very nice? It's safe and maybe tasty, but you need to grow it to the right size. What you see here is both a house and a feeder for a snail. Oh! Every evening after 8 o'clock, we feed them and turn on the watering. What, uh, what are your snail's favourite food? What do they enjoy eating the most? 
They like the rapeseed here the most. There is no such kind in Ukraine. It is rapeseed that we buy either in Poland or Germany. Oh, amazing. There we go. Well, what color does he choose? Yellow. Yeah, I'll take red. Red? Yeah, red. Ah, yes. Oh, is he all right? Oh, okay, we've got some other races as well. Ready, steady, go. Go! <laughs> Come on, Joe Ferrari. That's right, below the line. Here we have the go. maximum speed of a snail is seven centimeters per minute. Okay, so we've got enough time for that. Yeah, you scared him. Oh, God. Well, I mean... Boo-boo's doing OK. Joe, if you lose, oh, I will eat you. I will eat you. So, think about that. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> to the victor. Okay, this one. That, don't stop injuring the snails. I invite you to taste snail tartare marinated snails with different sauces. Have you ever tried any of these before? Um, well, I've, I've had maybe, I've had some snails in France maybe like 10 years ago, um, but I can't remember how they taste. Uh, maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe I've repressed it. Mm, I've had them before, yes, in Montreal in Canada, but I had a very severe allergic reaction. I'll show you a picture. Oh, 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 yeah, you look like... Allergia. Yeah, allergia. Oh, like Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> like oh. Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. <laughs> wow, so bad. <laughs> Do you have any allergies, by the way? I'll eat them. I've got no issue. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I've got no issue. I've got uh, this, called the snail, which is from Vinitsa. <laughs> what is it, sweets? It's a sweet, yeah. Very, Very good candies, natural. Exactly. Natural, healthy, and so I'll enjoy this, get my fruit. Coward. Please, talk me through the snails and let's... Let's start with the escargot. The dish is served hot, so we have to quickly taste it right away. We have three flavours here. The green sauce is just a classic pesto with pine nuts, parmesan, garlic and basil. Red is sun-dried tomatoes. White is two types of cheese, walnut and white wine. Delicious. Uh, OK, um, how do I...? Take a piece of baguette, choose the snail you like, pour the sauce on it and taste. There's, there's nothing that makes me hungrier than watching thousands of slimy snails crawl all over Heather's hands, so this should be nice. Pour the slime out. All right, here we go. Could we have just eaten it without the shell? Could you not have just like served it already on the, on the bread? It could be served in a plate along with sauces, but it would not be so beautiful. It wouldn't be a real dish that you could have in a restaurant. Oh, that's, genu that's genuinely delicious. That's, that's, that is a lovely piece of snail. Mm. What did it taste like? As well, you know, I'm not eating it, so you have to describe no, it. This is, this is the thing, right? So I think people have put off snails because they are snails and you eat them out of the shell. Yeah. But there's just the base meat, right? It's all about the flavouring and the cooking that goes into it. So I am sold. Snails are delicious. You are a fantastic cook. Thank you. Cooking is my hobby. I have two degrees, but I just love cooking. <laughs> you have two what, degrees what in degrees? What, what are your degrees in? I am a manager of international relations and a lawyer. I am specialised in prosecution. <laughs> So there was no snail farming degree? <laughs> During my university years, snails were kind of a hobby and work at the same time. So I started studying them more thoroughly. So we have, is this caviar? Yes, the snail caviar is more expensive than red and black caviar. Um, OK, so um, snails, eggs. We're going to enjoy some snails, eggs. I've, I've had caviar before, I think. 
Має легкий грибний смак і аромат лісу після дощу. Вау! Wow. I mean, it, it, it tastes and looks like snail's eggs. Um, it's not as salty as I thought it would be, um, but the sensation of the small balls popping in my mouth, um, it's odd, uh, but it's still, it's still very nice. The combination of the, is that a basil leaf, um, the butter and the, uh, the eggs is, again, very nice. How much would this cost on average, do you think? We sell them together. There's no option to buy them separately. 50 grams for 400 UAH. We try to make the prices more reasonable for Ukrainians so that locals can try it and understand it. In Europe, a jar of such caviar would go for 150 euros. In Ukraine, it is just 50 USD. Wow. That is, I mean, that is, that's more expensive than the, Plain than the fish, the, well, the fish oh. one, right? The fish caviar. Cheaper half the price. Well, I wouldn't be able to afford this at home, so I'm going to eat as much of it here as possible. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you come up with these recipes? If you Google some recipes, you probably won't find anything. And even if you do, they won't be the recipes that Ukrainians would like. We have Ukrainian lard, our borscht, dumplings, but no snails. We wanted to invent a recipe that would be loved by locals. So I started experimenting, and all of these recipes are mine. Of course, I tried them out on my husband and children first, so that they approve. And only after that, I can offer them to others. Because, yeah, we've had a lot of borscht, we've had a lot of traditional Ukrainian Frenike. food. Yeah. Frenike. So, yeah, it's, it's exciting It's exciting and different to try snails. And they are outstanding. They're honestly outstanding. I love it. This is great. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Jack you. Jack you. Bon appetit. So a lovely mixed day again today. Uh, we started off in the Ladovsky uh, Monastery. We did, and I think for me, the highlight of that was the 1,000-year-old water that we got to try. Hopefully it's miraculous, cleanses our bodies. Absolutely, and yeah, it cooled us down because it was very, very hot again. And the monk also said that I personally was very funny. Uh, and he let us ding his bell. So uh, that, that was nice for him, I suppose. Yeah, and have you been to anywhere similar? Um, I normally, when I go traveling, I look for places like a monastery or somewhere where I can go for like a trek and a long walk, which is exactly what we did up a lot of steps. Yeah, it was nice to see some skulls and stuff. That's oh, yeah, I forgot about that, all the yes! skulls. That was cool. <laughs> I was tempted to take one, but I, I, I didn't because I'm No, nice you now. break another collarbone, I think. Yeah. Um, and we are now in the snail farm, uh, which was really fun because I love snails. I love holding them. They're just so cute. <laughs> no, they're not cute, and you shouldn't hold them. They're slimy and disgusting, but they are delicious. So, I think both yeah. the snail sweets are delicious. Uh, but it was really fun to do a snail race, even though... Yeah, cheated. I did, I did cheat. However, from the sounds of it, Natalia, the lovely woman that fed all the snails and farms the snails, stole that from the UK. So give it a few more years and they'll be chasing cheese down a hill or smacking sticks together outside of a pub. So, yeah, yeah, or maybe, you know, smacking ourselves to get rid of these mosquitoes. Yes, yeah, so a lot of so mosquitoes. Let's so let's get out of here and try and eat some more food, I think. Yeah. I'm very hungry still.